What is going on everybody, it's Stas here and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update talking about what I personally did today in the markets as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now heading into the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title guys, you guys exploded today so we're going to be talking about that as well as some options that I'm currently in right now. So if you guys want to see that portion of the video, stay tuned here in a couple of minutes. We'll go over that. And all I ask from you is if you enjoy the video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group. Both are 100% free of charge and they're linked down below in the description box. So guys, Let's get started here. I do have 3M on my screen right now. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes, but I want to break down these markets, which honestly didn't really do much today. The S&P right now, and I'm actually recording this with 45 minutes left in the market, so anything could happen, but the way it looks like it, guys, the markets are going to close pretty flat today, right? The S&P is literally down 71 cents right now, down 0.02%. Nothing really crazy, right? But the one thing that I'm seeing is we are looking to uh, hold an uptrend. What chart is it on? Let me just show, um, let me just find it for you guys. I think it's the five day, five minute. Yup, here it is. You guys can see, it seems like we are retracing and holding this 180 SMA as a support here on the 5 day 5 minute. So ultimately this is actually a, a level of support that's stemming back from earlier today and actually from yesterday as well on the S&P which is at around 30 36, 30, 35, 30, 36. You guys can see we had a double bottom there yesterday. This morning we popped from there up to the all time high. We pulled down again, held it, and now again we're on that 50 or rather the 180 SMA on the five day, five minute chart, which is also again putting us on this um, 30, 36 level. So heading into the close here in the next 45 minutes, ideally I'd like to see a takeoff here and really for the SMA. S&P to start running up to test that 50 SMA and maybe even break that and that's what we're going to need to see on a technical basis for this to potentially push higher um, you know heading into tomorrow that's pretty much my thought here on this smaller time frame overall on the four hour guys this is looking bullish right ever since we broke above the ascending triangle we filled the gap to the previous all time high which was 3027 and obviously we broke that and I got a question you know is there resistances on the S&P right now? There's no resistances because we're at all-time highs. Well, right now there is, I guess you can say, at 3047, but as we're pushing to the all-time highs and we're hitting all-time highs, there's really no resistance at that point, right? Because, again, we're at all-time highs. There's just supports to look at. So, overall, again, the support is 3036, and if we break that, maybe we pull down to 3027, which, again, is that previous all-time high. So, going to the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, guys. This one, again, just like the S&P, not really doing much. Down about 12 points right now, down about 0.04%. One thing that I'm liking here is we are holding 27K, which is a very prominent level of support here, and we need to see it hold this level for it to fill the gap up to the all-time high, which is at 27.4. And again, this did not hit all-time highs yet, believe it or not, right? You saw the S&P did, the Dow did not. There's a lot of stocks that have been weighing it down, Boeing being one of them. 3M, you know, got squashed after earnings. That's another one of them, right? Overall, you know, it just hasn't been doing as well as the S&P. But again, technicals are looking good right now. If we start to push into the mid, I'd say 27,100s, 27,200s in the middle of this channel, that would give me confidence that the Dow is on its way to that all-time high and maybe even, um, you know, breaking the all-time high and making a new all-time high, right? So that's kind of what I'm looking 
looking at here on the four hour chart. If we look a bit closer on the one hour chart, you can see, you know, how prominent of a level 27K is as a support. And if we go to the five day, you'll probably see it even better, right? We pulled down yesterday, held it beautifully, right? We popped up today, pulled down, held it again, you know, this morning. We pulled down yet again in the middle of the day. We held 27K. And now it seems like we're holding it yet again. So this could be a triple bottom breakout if we do something like this and ultimately get out of these moving average resistances that I'm seeing here and honestly this lower high pattern that I'm seeing here as well. So if we do that, that's going to be a huge breakout on the Dow Jones in my opinion. Going over here to the NQ guys on the 5 day 5 minute, you can see ever since we hit that all time high at 8100, we've been downtrending and this was yesterday near the close of the market, we've been downtrending and you can see the big tank here after hours. That is because Google reported earnings and I'm sure a lot of you guys saw the initial reaction to their earnings in terms of the stock's price. The stock's price tanked, right? I, I think it felt like 80 points or something like that, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. But that, yeah, that initially, you know, dumped down um, the NQ here, and we've been pretty much downtrending ever since, you know, in the short term here. But still, overall, we're still on an uptrend. You know, if you look on the 10-day chart, this is just a simple, healthy retracement. So I'm not really worried about it from the bullish standpoint. This is just one of those healthy retracements, right? Everything that's going up needs to pull down, imme not immediately, but eventually, right? It needs to pull down eventually, and that opens up potential buying opportunities if the uptrend holds. And right now, the uptrend seems like it's holding, right? Oh, I see a support here. Ultimately, I think we might be getting down to it. Maybe 80.35 is the support um, that we might hold. And at that point, guys, the uh, 180 SMA will probably meet us right there. And that could be a really nice dip point here on the NQ where we could potentially load up on, you know, TQQQ, which is an ETF that goes up whenever the NASDAQ is going up, right? So going back to that NASDAQ very quickly, guys, to look at the four hour chart um, briefly here, let's see what it's showing us. So we can see again, it's just a brief retracement. We already broke up to all time highs. Now it seems like it wants to pull down and retest those all time highs as a new or rather the previous all-time highs as a new support, right? So that's kind of what I'm seeing here um, as of right now on the NASDAQ. And those are my thoughts on the market, right? My technical breakdown. Let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on the market right now? Do you see the market going higher? Do you see the market going lower? Remember, we may be getting a potential rate cut here, 25 basis points. Trade talks are in the work, right? We have earnings coming up tomorrow that are huge. Apple, Facebook, these things can definitely fluctuate the stock market either up or down, right? Like we've seen so many times in the past. So let's get into the trading update portion of today's video. We do have quite a few things to talk about. And also, like you read in the title, again, an options update. What am I personally doing? And I forgot to mention and kind of update you guys on what happened with my SPY puts from about two, three weeks ago. And I'm sure you guys can probably guess what happened to those. But let's just start off with what I did in my smaller, more risky account with you guys. And like I mentioned about two, three weeks ago, I'm not sure if you guys remember, I mentioned that I wanted to start building a swing position in my small risky account where I typically take moves that I wouldn't really do, you know, make in my larger account. And this is one of those moves. And I'll show you guys the screenshot on the screen right now. So I started buying in on you guys, I believe in the 13 range. Again, you guys can see it in the screenshot. Shot. I bought more shares a couple of days ago. I think at like 1310 or something like that. The ones from before that were an average of around 1360. And my goal with these was to really sell as we started to break above these levels, you know, like 1470. Obviously, we got the massive gap up. So I didn't sell after that breakout, which was pretty crazy, right? Because it gapped up so much this morning. My second sell target was 1570. We actually gapped up above that when the market 
market opened as well. So by the time the market opened, guys, the price was at $16 on you guys. And if you do the math, and again, you saw it in the screenshot, from where I was getting in at around $13.50 up to around $16, that was close to a 20% gain. This is showing 16%, but it was actually, it was really more than 16%. Uh, it was actually like 20%. And I ended up selling out and locking that 20% profit, which was a $200 gain on $1,000 this week morning. And, you know, you may be saying to yourself, you know, you locked it in kind of early. And the truth is, guys, at this point in time, you know, we were so elevated in you guys. You know, the price gapped up from fourteen seventy up to sixteen bucks. We were kind of overbought, I believe, on the daily chart. Let me see if I'm correct there. Um, yeah, we were kind of overbought on the daily chart here. You know, the RSI was descending, so I figured locking in profits at sixteen ten, where it, you know that's where I locked in those profits. That would have been, you know, kind of a wise move again, since the profits were extreme and. In terms of a percentage, right? 20% is crazy, right? So I locked in those profits and in hindsight, yeah, I should have held for the rest of the day up until here. I would have made, um, you know, how much, how much should I miss out on? 6%? That's okay, right? You know, I could have made 26% on the position, but I made 20%. That is the first trade that I ended up locking in today on you guys. And believe it or not, guys, before I recorded this video and we were talking in the Discord group chat as well, I actually caught this move on you guys. I ended up getting in at 1575 and I had a quick little scalp trade up to about 16 bucks, sold it just like that. It was beautiful, right? Because if we we look on this chart obviously it was ridiculously overbought at 17 bucks right so 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 overbought and we were talking in the chat today and again that discord chats linked down below in the description we were talking like okay you guys needs a breather right here it's so overbought natural gas is overextended it's been running like crazy over the past 48 hours and what did we get guys we got the breather and you can see based on my trend lines here which is why it's so important to draw these trend lines this was holding 1570 1575 quite nicely which is a prominent level of support after we got that breather so we were holding that level nicely and I ended up just taking a small position nothing crazy right nothing crazy was watching it very closely with a mental stop loss and once I got in guys again we held that level nicely we kind of double bottom but this was actually after I sold it but you can see you know even now this could end up being a nice move heading into tomorrow right but when I sold it you know, we got the pop and we got the nice little recovery from there. And sometimes you 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 see that when you're trading stocks, ETFs, ETNs, whatever it may be, right? You see when a stock ETF, ETN takes a massive dump off, it finds a short-term support and it recovers a little bit, but it might be very quickly or it could be, you know, a withstanded period of recovery, right? But in this case, it was a very quick recovery and it looks like it could be a withstanded period of, of recovery here. But that initial recovery was quick and that quick recovery, you can profit on that, but timing is key and you have to catch it right. And I, you know, fortunately enough, was able to catch it right today and I did make that nice little gain. I think it was about like a 1%, a um, little bit less than 1%, I think it was. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was more because I sold at about 16. So it was more of about 1.5%, which is very, very good. So uh, needless to say, guys, today was a good day um, trading you guys. Let's talk about these options that I'm in right now and I'll have some screenshots for you on the screen to show you um, the well, actually, the one that I took a loss on, I won't have a screenshot because I didn't actually get the screenshot that one, but I lost on the SPY put that I was talking to you guys about from two weeks ago. And let me show you guys um, what was I doing, uh, what, what I was doing on that SPY put. It was during this time period. Um, I kind of wanted, uh, wanted to hedge against the potential downside on the market. And obviously, that didn't happen. And if you're on the wrong side of the options trade, what happens? You lose money. And, and the and the thing about options is, guys, you can lose whatever your premium is if you're buying and uh, if you're buying calls and you're buying puts, right? So in that case, my premium was about 110 bucks. 
So I think I bought the option um, at a dollar and eleven, and then obviously you multiply that by a hundred, hundred and ten bucks. So I lost that entire amount because I didn't cut my losses. I could have cut my losses to be honest, guys, but I didn't cut my losses, so I lost one hundred percent of that option. But let's say it were to go down to my strike price, which was I think two eighty eight or two eighty six. I'm, I'm I'm not remembering off the top of my head. If it were to go down there and even below that, I would have made money. But again, I was was on the wrong side of that trade, but let's talk about what I'm on the right side of right now, which is UNG, and I actually bought these calls last week. I bought these, um, you'll see the screenshot, I forget exactly what day it was. Here it is, guys, you can see that I bought them at an average cost of about 72 cents, so you multiply that by 100, my total, you know, money in was 72 bucks, uh, uh, bucks on these calls, right? So the strike price is at 21 bucks and you can see they expire on the 29th of November and as of right now I'm up 60 bucks or at the time that I recorded or screenshotted this which was a couple of hours ago up 60 bucks up 83% I think it's a little bit less now because UNG did end up taking a pullback but either way I'm up about 60 70 to 80 percent on these options and they were in the money they were in the money a little bit today, um, you know, when UNG was above 21 bucks, but ultimately, again, the, the expiration date is on the 29th, so that gives me exactly one more month for these to get above 21 bucks, right? That's kind of the goal here, and when that happens, if that happens, that's when I'll start to make a lot more money on the options. So overall, guys, that's what I ended up doing today. You know, uh, UNG, I'm up on those options. You know, SPY lost all the money on those options. Um, you guys was in and out of it a lot today did well today with you guys and um yeah let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts on that what are your thoughts on the market and what have you been doing in terms of your trades so let's just get into these stocks that i'm watching now guys because there is not a lengthy list today about six that i want to talk about but i don't want this video to be too long so let's go rapid fire so obviously you guys you know we already kind of broke that one down at this point you know, 1575 is a level that I'm watching for it to hold heading into tomorrow. You guys can see it does seem like we're in that level right now, in that range. So we could end up holding that heading into the close of the market today. If that does end up happening, we pop up to that next level of resistance at 1675. That could be a move that we see tomorrow. Let's say we break that level. There's a huge gap up to around 1830, which is a nice move of around seven to nine percent so that could happen and again you gas is going up when natural gas is going up we rolled over to the december contract today and that is why we saw that big gap up in natural gas um about 24 hours ago right you can see that gap up from 247 up to 256 ever since then guys natural gas has been ripping hit 270 got rejected by that resistance pulled down but ultimately we're still holding that 180 sma support on the five day five minute the uptrend as of right now is still intact so watch that recovery tomorrow watch that push on you guys that is a very possible thing that could happen so the next stock i want to talk about guys let me pull it up here again it's going to be McDonald's, right? McDonald's is one that I'm heavily considering at this point, um, adding to my swing portfolio, to be completely honest with you guys, right? They reported an earnings report, and off the top of my head, um, I think their earnings weren't good. They were not good, as you can see by the stock's price, right? The stock went from 221 you know, over the past couple of months, down to where it is right now, and it actually ramped up in its de deceleration here after the earnings report, right? Which is why I'm saying the earnings earnings report uh, was not good. You guys can see actual EPS 211 versus 223, so they butchered it on EPS. That ended up tanking the stock, right? We blew through 198, that level of support. We honestly blew through 193, 194, and now it seems like we are finding a short-term consolidation here at around 191 bucks. but the thing that worries me, guys, is we're still in a downtrend based on this hourly chart, and honestly, based on every time frame. 
game. We're still making lower lows. We're still making lower highs. Technically, this is a lower high. So until we break out of this moving average resistance, which is the 50 SMA, you know, on this uh, hourly chart, I'm not looking to really build a swing position quite yet because I kind of want to time this one um, correctly, right? But let's say you you see value in this, even though the technicals aren't really reversing quite yet, you could start building a, a little position here if that risk fits your risk reward um, profile, right? But as of now, you know, for me, I need to see that break, right? If we go back to that four hour chart, we may even sell off to 187, right? If that does, does not end up breaking out, maybe we start to sell off even heavier here. We could get down to 187, but me, I don't think that's going to happen. Or rather, if we break 187, I don't think we'd break 187. I think it's possible to get there, but ultimately, it's extremely oversold right now. So I do think we're going to see um, either this week or early next week. I think we're going to see, you know, uh, some start, some form of a of a breather here to the upside. Because again, we've been getting squabbled here in in McDonald's stock 20 points in the past couple of days. This one needs a little breather, needs a little break. So I'm watching for a potential pop. You know, we could even be running up to 198 if we do get that top uh, or that pop rather, and that's very attractive in my personal opinion. So the next stock I want to talk about is Facebook. No need to go too deep into this. They're reporting earnings tomorrow. One of the biggest companies in the world. They are worth watching. And overall, the technicals right now, we're trading in this uh, horizontal pattern right here. As you guys can see, we briefly broke above 190 today, which was very attractive in my opinion, but we ultimately, uh, you know, didn't, didn't uh, hold that level, which I want to see. But the fact that we are reporting earnings, that could get us above this level and ultimately into the next channel if the earnings are good. So where I'd like to trade it, it would be between 193 and 204, which would offer us about a nice 5-6% profit. So I'm watching Facebook tomorrow. Tesla's another one that we saw. The ridiculous earnings report, huge short squeeze here from about 250 up to 340. That's ridiculous, right? We failed holding 323 as a support. We're clearly selling off here on the four hour chart. There's really no other support coming up here that I'm seeing um, other than, I guess you can say 310 is a support, which in the near term, we may be holding that. But if we break that, it could be free falling back into the high 290s. Um, I don't know if that's a stretch right here, guys. Let me know. Um, I think it's possible, especially with how, you know, you know, how high it's squeezed up over these past couple of days. We may see that, but also ultimately watch the 310 level here in the short term. That's what I'm personally doing, right? If we go to that hourly chart, you guys can see it wouldn't be too crazy if we did hold 310, right? You know, this is an old level of resistance from when they reported earnings, right? You know, that could definitely hold right now. I'm thinking it's possible. So the next one is Apple. Of course, everyone's watching this one tomorrow, guys. They're reporting earnings as well. We saw the big pullback from 250 down to where we are right now, which we we are holding the 180 SMA on the hourly chart, which is a good sign. On the four-hour chart, we're also holding that 50 SMA, which is also a good sign. And these are levels that I'm watching tomorrow for Apple to hold, right? This is stock. This is a stock that is definitely going to be moving up or down based on their earnings. But let's say they get good earnings. We're able to get in on this dip on the 50 SMA. This could be a nice entry point. But me personally, guys, to be completely honest with you all, you know, I'm probably not going to get involved with Apple here. I see a lot more potential in, you know, you guys. I see a lot more potential definitely in McDonald's and honestly in Facebook as well. You know, 3M is another one that we'll talk about here in a minute that I see. You know, I think it's a bit safer to be honest in the short term here due to Apple's earnings coming up and who knows what they're going to do in terms of earnings and how the stock's going to react. But those are some levels that I'm watching and ending off the video, let's talk about 3M a bit, right? 3M here, you know, it's not the, the most glamorous stock and nobody's going to argue that it is the most glamorous stock, but technicals don't lie and this is looking pretty, pretty decent right now, right? Not, not as good as McDonald's, not as good as you guys in my opinion, but I think as 
as a safer quote unquote play here over the next two, three days. But let's say something with China happens. This will probably get rocked. So hopefully nothing with China happens. Let's say that stays okay in terms of the trade war. I think this will be a safer play up to around 173, 172, right? We fill the gap up from 166 up to 174 um, once in the past when we broke above 166, which we just did. And now it seems like we're about to pull up to about 170 again, which I think there's potential again that we might fill that gap up to 173. And ultimately, we are seeing an, an uptrend right here. You know, higher low confirmed on the 180 SMA. We bounced on top of that. Again, we broke 166. We pushed to a higher high today. This is looking good. Not the most glamorous again, guys, but still it offers about a 2% up to that resistance at around 173, which in my opinion, I think that's worth watching here, um, you know, in terms of a short-term trade, whether it's one to two days. So overall, that's the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content for me. And don't forget, if you guys want to be on that that newsletter email list for the Strive Smart merch store. That is linked down below as well in the top of the description. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Have a good one. Peace out.